is Skip Schumacher. A wind and the first pitch is a fastball for a strike. One bouncer right at the second baseman Fontenot. Two pitches, one out. That's a good start for Carlos Schumacher. Is a guy that's given him problems in the past. Was hitting 368 against Big Z in games leading up today. So good to retire him, especially with you know who lurking a couple spots away. Now facing Colby Rasmus. Cardinals top prospect. He's made starts at all three outfield spots. Swing and a miss. Nothing in two with you know who on deck. <laughs> Right, one thing to watch for with Big Z early going, especially that first inning, is his pace out there on the mound. Sometimes he gets a little too far ahead of himself, wants to work too quickly. Sometimes he gets frustrated with himself or with the home plate umpire, but so far so good. Just off the outside corner. And it's even two and two. 55 degrees. And the wind out of the east at seven. Not blowing very hard. Swing and a miss. That's his first punch out. As Pujols will come to the plate. Well, after a series of sinking fastballs and splitters, he rears back with a four seamer at 94 and blows it right by Rasmus. Foul back our way. Dale, and this is one of those matchups. Uh, people all around baseball that may be watching the game today as they're preparing to go to their own ballpark for their game or sitting at home, and you hear Zambrano against Pujols. I'm going to stop what I'm doing and watch this one. It's kind of been a wash between the two. Pujols hitting 259 against Carlos with a couple of doubles and five home runs, but Big Z has struck him out 11 times also. A 1 1 pitch. Now it's 1 and 2. Pujols was intentionally walked twice yesterday, went 1 for 3 officially. 10 RBIs away from 1,000 in his career. Good pitch. I mean, uh, the consensus around the league is there's no easy way to get Pujols out, but if you can make him move his feet. Throw in at the belt, or in this case, in at the knees. Make him move and get a little uncomfortable in that batter's box. You might have a chance of making a good pitch and getting him out. Sweeping slider was way outside. Full count on Pujols with Ryan Ludwig on deck. Line foul by maybe a foot. So we'll do it again. Cardinals at eight and three. Two games up in the division. Cubs are in second at five and four. And he went. Home plate umpire Sam Holbrook made the call. So Z strikes out two in the opening inning. And the Cubs will get their first.
to you by Pepsi. Refresh everything. Soriano, Fukudome, and Lee at the top. Hawk Power in again for Bradley, Ramirez, and Soto. Fontenot, Terrio, and Zambrano, seven through nine. A quick look at the Cardinals defensively. Chris Duncan in left. We know he had his problems yesterday. Rasmus in center, Ledwick in right. Thurston, Barden, Schumacher, and Pujols across the infield. Yadier Molina doing the catching today for the rookie right-hander, P.J. Walters. Hart's got to be pounding. He pitched great in his first start of the year, but that was a triple A with Memphis versus Oklahoma City. This is Cardinals Cubs. We've only been doing this since the late 18 or the early 1890s. He's here because Chris Carpenter has a left oblique tear. We're saying four to eight weeks. Tony LaRussa, I guess, didn't want Walters to have to face even more pressure of a, a Sunday night game. So that's why he's pitching today, and also uh, this was his day to pitch. That first start at AAA was six days ago as he strikes out his first major league batter. Alfonso Soriano, one out. Well, congratulations. Don't do it again. Here's our high def shot of the game sponsored by Comcast. Well, not only is Pujols able to drive that bat through the zone quickly, he's able to pull the bat back quickly. I, with the naked eye, I thought he held up on that swing, but you could clearly see with our high def shot of the day that he did commit to that ball, and the correct call was strike three. Cubs baseball in high definition sponsored by Comcast. Called strike on Kosuke Fukudome. He'll probably see a healthy dose of change-ups from Walters. Yeah, the scouting report is that he has a, an average fastball that sinks away from a left-handed hitter, an average slurvy breaking ball, but a plus changeup that he will throw three, four times in a row to the same hitter. The thing the Cardinals liked about him in spring training was the fact that he challenged the strike zone, very uh, similar to what David Patton did to earn his spot on the Cubs roster this spring. He challenged the strike zone, showed a lot of poise on the mound. Perhaps not the best stuff in the league, but knows what to do with the stuff that he has. Dothan or Dothan, Alabama. Full count. Dothan, Alabama. And the 3 2 pitch is outside, ball four. First base runner for either team. Derek with a sack fly in the first inning yesterday. 0 for 3 after that, but a good start to the homestand. He's 5 for 10. Caught the outside corner. Walters from the stretch with a runner on base for the first time. The kick and the pitch. That's also a strike. He's PJ. His full name is Philip Dwayne Walters. Should we assume he's a junior? PJ? Not really sure. No, Dwayne does not start with the J. Though. You're good. <laughs> Outside. Well, you know, Len, we talked about Chris Duncan in left field yesterday for the Cardinals and the depth with which he played. Colby Rasmus out there in center field is uh, just about matching him. He's only a couple steps off the warning track and straight away center. Cardinals defensively really playing deep. I mean, when you see outfielders playing that deep, that's when, as a base runner at first, you have it in your mind on a base hit to the outfield, I'm going first to third. Make them charge the ball hard and get off a quick throw to stop you, but have your mindset that you're going to go first to third on any base hit to the outfield.
good lead by Koske. And the 2 2 pitch. A ground ball left side. And a sliding stop and safe at second. Thurston had to leave his feet and could not get off a strong throw. And Koske able to beat it. That's an infield hit for D. Lee. Little roller to that left side. Thought it was going to get past the third baseman Thurston and give Barden an opportunity to make a backhanded play, but you could clearly see there Thurston just off balance, trying to throw from the ground. Couldn't get much on it, and a good hustle by Fukudome to beat that throw. Second straight start for Michael Hoffpower in right. Milton Bradley is still day to day. Should be available to pinch hit again. But the groin still not 100%. I asked Micah how comfortable he was in right yesterday. He said, I felt pretty good. He looked comfortable. He said, uh, I asked him about the wind. He said, it changes a lot. And that happens a lot. Oh, it's drilled deep to right. And it's going to hit the warning track. Koske is going to score easily. We'll see if Derek, nope, he's going to stop at third. And Hoffpower with an RBI double, his third RBI of the young season. And the Cubs strike first. It's one to nothing. Well, exactly the kind of offensive start you like to see against the young pitcher. I'm sure he's got a lot of butterflies out there on the mound. Did start the game with a strikeout, but then a walk, an infield hit, and now a rocket double off the wall in right center field for Micah Hoffpower. Don't let the young man get settled in out there on the mound. Brings up the five hitter, Aramis Ramirez. Only changed one through eight in the lineup. Soto and Fontano swapping spots. So Gio. Is on deck trying to get out of an early season slump at one for 14. Ramirez making his second straight start after missing a couple of games with the stiffness in his back. Not a big surprise. All those guys spending a lot of time in the NL Central. Dunn and Bay are no longer in the division. J. Walters heart pounding, but you could say the same for Mike Quaddy and Derek Lee after that screamer <laughs> off the bat of Ramirez. Schumacher charging from second. We saw that yesterday for Brendan Ryan. He starts back, and then as the pitch is being delivered, he comes all the way into the edge of the grass. To center and it'll drop down for a hit. And they'll get one more, two to nothing. Hawk power stopping at third as the throw gets past Pujols. Aramis has found a couple of nice holes in the outfield. Yesterday he poked one into right. And this one, if you're going to hit it to center today with Rasmus playing deep, don't hit it too far. Yeah, don't hit it too hard. Just a little floater out into shallow center field. On a pitch that uh, was supposed to be out over the plate, kind of straight inside, jammed Rami a little bit, but he just muscled it out there into shallow center field. The Cubs still have it cooking. Keep the pressure on. Soto trying to get on track. One for 14. His manager noted that he hasn't yet taken a walk. You know, I think back to spring training, Len, and we talked about it with the guys that were in Arizona. One of the last things to come for a hitter is the knowledge of your own strike zone. You take a lot of BP early in camp. You go out there in those early exhibition games, and everybody's very aggressively swinging the bat. Sometimes it pitches out of the strike zone, but as camp goes on, you gradually get down, narrow your zone, know which pitches you can handle, what you can't handle, and... Gio is going through that process right now during the regular season because of his abbreviated spring. Some of the breaking balls that he swung at in the ball game yesterday, uh, he wouldn't even think about swinging at in about another week. First and third, two in, only one out. 
And Soto swings and misses to make it two and two. That's a change up from Walters right there. And the report that I saw down in the coach's room this morning said he would throw it three, four, maybe even five times in a row to the same hitter. That's his go to pitch when he's in trouble. Another one right there. That one up a little bit more. A little more hittable. Soto just able to get a piece of it. Just changed the direction, fouled it off the thumb of Yadier Molina's mitt, stays alive. After the strikeout by Soriano, a walk and three straight hits. And it brings up another 2 2 pitch. Backhanded by Barton. Schumacher will turn it. And that'll end the Cubs first. They do get a pair. It's two to nothing after one. Cardinals at 705 throughout the game great prizes will be awarded to lucky fans and random seats compliments of 711. Oh thank heaven. Is that lucky fans in random seats or random fans in lucky seats. I think you could do it either, either way. way. It's, yeah. it's a versatile promotion. Well, they're all lucky seats here today. Beautiful day at the ballpark. There's 10,000 adults received the Cubs. W banner brought to you by Bud Light. Ryan Ludwig. Foul tipping strike two. Career high hitting streak going back to last year. 19 games. The guy behind him has hit in all of them this year. 10. It's Chris Duncan and then Yadier Molina. Cardinals. Are scoring runs. They lead the National League in runs. They lead the majors in on base percentage. First in the NL in slugging. Tied for first with 13 home runs. They have made, however, the most errors in the majors with 10. They won yesterday despite three defensive miscues. And it's a theme that Lou Pinella goes back to a lot when you talk about pitching and defense. When the Cubs struggle, he normally says, you know what? If we scored more runs, we could take care of all those things. He's always focused on the offense. That's good medicine for what ails the team. As you said, the Cardinals are struggling a little bit defensively, but they're out hitting their mistakes. 
when your pitching is not quite as sharp as you'd like it to be your offense can make up for that as well and you know, Lou's always been an offense oriented manager he likes to see the guys swing the bats. These two two is hit foul and in terms of the Cubs pitching at the moment. The tough part about it is early in the season your starters are generally not going to be stretched out too much. Middle relief becomes even more important and as we talk ad nauseum a lot of guys down there are still trying to find their rhythm. Ludwig swings and misses. We haven't seen a whole lot of Marlon and Greg here lately. Which is good news bad news. They're getting their rest but that means the Cubs haven't had late leads the last couple of days. Good pitch down below the bottom of the strike zone there. You know, and I think any success the Cardinals have this year, it doesn't necessarily hinge on Albert Pujols. You know what he's going to do. He's going to put up monster numbers, have an MVP type season. Now the real key for their season is the guy that just struck out, the guy at the plate right now, Yadier Molina. If the guys hitting after Pujols in the lineup can pick up the slack and pick up those RBIs, uh, they could be a strong offensive ball club. And so far in the early going, that's been the case. One one on Duncan three for 14 against Carlos yeah, the four five six hitters in this Cardinals lineup uh, don't pick up the RBI's after the intentional walks or the pitch arounds that Albert Pujols figures to get this year then nobody's going to pitch to Albert. Pop foul back to the seats Duncan with consecutive three hit games. As he has remained in the lineup. Rick Ankiel not in there today. Neither is Khalil Green. That one went into the dugout. I noticed uh, Ankiel 0 for 6 versus Zambrano and Khalil Green 1 for 18 with six <laughs> strikeouts. That probably would explain it. Yeah, the players have a term for that. They say the computer got it. All you have to do is look at that stat sheet, and if the numbers are not pretty, the manager is usually going to give you a day off against a tough pitcher like Zambrano. Swing and a miss, four straight strikeouts. Cubs lead the majors in strikeouts. They have 90 now in the season. They've led baseball in K's eight straight years. That's a major league record. Well, Zambrano continues to throw that splitter where he just threw that last one to Chris Duncan. They're going to widen their strikeout lead. He's got nasty stuff today. It's getting close to sixth on the uh, Cubs strikeout list as Molina singles into right. It's their first hit. Cubs fans, don't forget to check out our WGN baseball blog on WGNTV.com. Click on the sports link. Look for Lennon Bob's baseball blog. I have a post on some uh, pregame notes today. We have game notes from our friends at Stats Inc. Video from this week and much, much more. Again, WGNTV.com. Click on sports. Look for the link to Len and Bob's blog. Zambrano from the stretch for the first time. Called strike on left handed hitting Joe Thurston. Clark Griswold is here. He finally got the lights up. <laughs> Exciting finish last night. The so Blackhawks scored a dozen seconds into overtime. One of those deals in the playoffs. It can last 12 seconds or 12 hours. What a game. 0 2. Driven. Koske will get there. And as Thurston hit it hard, but for an out to deep center. Cubs lead early. 2 to nothing after an inning and a half.
Packs. It's called McDonald's Appetite Stimulus Package. Your choice of one of four tasty sandwiches, hot fries, plus an ice cold soft drink. A full meal for under five bucks. Prices and participation may vary. Bottom two is rookie right-hander P.J. Walters tries to settle in after allowing two runs. Could have been more for the Cubs in the first, but he got a double play ball to end it. Facing the bottom of the order, Fontenot, Terrio, and Zambrano. That's rolled into center. So, Font so Soto, Fontenot, Terrio, Zambrano, Soriano. Gotta like that. Oh, my. Hey, Lynn, Gerald Perry wanted us to send out uh, best wishes and all of his love to his daughter, Fallon, and her husband, Jamal. They just welcomed baby Blake into the world in Atlanta yesterday, the newest Cub fan. That's Gerald's second grandchild, but his first grandson. I said, are you going to turn him into a switch hitter right away? He said, we'll work on it. <laughs> Congratulations. Indeed. Also want to say hello and uh, thank you to big Cubs fan Sue Harris watching us today and every day on WGN from West Des Moines, Iowa. Terrio takes it off the plate inside two and nothing. The hit for Fontenot snapped in 0 for 14. And Terrio comes in. One for 11 on the homestand. That's a strike. Great hit and run count here. Two and one is a count. A lot of managers like to play a little hit and run, figuring that that pitcher doesn't want to go to a 3 1 count. He's going to throw a strike. Get that runner in motion. We know how Terrio likes to hit that ball to the right side. Would figure to be a great combination to play a little hit and run. The Cubs have stolen seven bases. They've been caught five times. That's the most caught stealing, most caught stealings, plural, in the majors. Two and two. So we have seen the Cubs be a little bit more aggressive. But there was a strike him out, throw him out double play yesterday. And Terrio shoots it in the right. Fontenot will stop at second base. Two on for Zambrano. Does so well. You see that huge hole in the right side of the infield. That's right where his normal swing hits the baseball. Perfect line drive through that gap into right field, and a wise choice by Mike Fontenot to stop at second base. Ryan Ludwig with a strong throwing arm already has three outfield assists on the season. Well, while this is the big league debut of Walters, he did make bunch of appearances for the Cardinals in spring training in Florida. So there is some familiarity with his teammates. He's already given up five hits. This is the ninth batter he's faced. Outside on a change up and Molina is going to go out and talk to him. And I think one thing he might tell him is going right back to the top here. Got to throw some strikes. It makes it possible to walk Big Z. Make them good strikes, though, because this guy can hit a little bit. Uh, and normally, this would be an obvious bunt situation for just about any other pitcher in baseball. But with a two-run lead in the game, a couple runners on base, they've got that young pitcher rattled a little bit out there on the mound. Lou's going to let Big Z pick a pitch and try to do some damage. Has had in his entire career 536 plate appearances. He has walked five times. <laughs> he didn't walk at all last year. 
and he takes now his first walk since 2006. He's a much more patient hitter this year. He's two walks away now from his career high in the season. They're loaded up for Soriano. Well, he'd like to change these numbers around a little bit. His uh, best numbers have come with nobody on to start the season. Small sample size. Three on, no outs, and that pitch will not count. Stunning development. Carlos Zambrano walked. It was a good at bat. The kick and the pitch. Roller foul. As good a hitter as he is, it is surprising. He's sprinkled at least a couple over the past four years. He doesn't want to walk. He wants to swing that bat. Fontenot at third, Terrio second, Zambrano at first. The 0 1 pitch, swing and a miss after a breaking ball. Here's the 0 2, he struck him out, went off the plate again with a breaker. He has two strikeouts. Both have come against Soriano. And both have come on sliders out of the strike zone. That pitch barely started on the outside corner. Ends up in the dirt in that left-handed batter's box. First time all these Cubs hitters have seen Walters. So uh, there will be an adjustment period. And you've seen that pitch several times now in your first two at-bats. Hopefully if Walters is still in there, Soriano will be able to lay off that slider next time. Nothing in one to Coast K. Well, and there was a time not too long ago that when the Cubs faced a pitcher they hadn't seen before, forget about it. They had no chance. I mean, even if the guy didn't have extraordinary stuff, you know, just a sinker slider pitcher that keeps the ball down in the zone, he throws strikes, nothing. Lots of chances early on. But it's one and two on Coast K. Cubs have had a lot of opportunities in this series. The sixth inning yesterday was particularly frustrating. They had runners at second and third with no outs, and then bases loaded one out in a tie game, and they couldn't get a run. One, two to Coast K. Two and two. Back to back change ups again from Walters. If he does happen to get to a two strike out, uh, that's what he's more than likely going to go with. The change up or a sinker away. It has to be a tough decision for Tony LaRusso how long to stick with his youngster. Optimistically, any manager would like to think your pitcher is going to settle in. High in the air to center for Rasmus. Trying to have his momentum head toward third. That's where his throw will go. Fontenot's in. Coast K with a sacrifice fly. Give him nine RBIs. And it's three to nothing. About the depth that the Cardinals outfielders play. Ryan Terrio went back to tag up at second base, took about five or six big steps toward third, and then saw that that throw was online, decided to hit the brakes and stay in scoring position at second base with two outs. So again, Walters trying to limit the damage. Gave up two in the first, one here in the second, but he faces Derek Lee now with two outs and runners at first and second.
kick and the 0-1. He's ahead 0-2. Trying to make a juggle now. He already had a ball and another ball came out to the mound. Still 0 2. One other game going on right now, and the Indians just scored three in the top of the fifth. They lead the Yankees 5 3. Mark DeRosa with his second home run for the Indians. Boy, a lot of long balls. We talked about it when we were at Yankee Stadium. We thought it might be a pretty good offensive part. Teixeira, Cabrera, and Damon have gone deep for the Yankees. Everything else around baseball is later tonight. Bloated pitch count for Walters up in the mid 50s, and he's only got five outs. Terrio at second, Zambrano at first. The 2 2 pitch, another foul. Longtime pitching coach Dave Duncan looking on. As Walter steps off. the sign and coming back on another 2 2 battle continues. Let's check out who's moving forward with Toyota. Derek Lee against the Cardinals. Second highest career average against an NL opponent. 346 versus the Rockies. Today's Toyota moving forward thanks to Toyota. Side. He's worked another full count. And the runners will be moving with two outs. Well, pitch count may end up being the determining factor, but I started to mention about Tony LaRusso. Tough decisions to make with the young pitcher. You'd like to think he's going to settle in, but the reality is you're facing Carlos Zambrano, who appears to be on top of his game today. Down the right field line, and it's foul. Landed right behind the bullpen line. And Zambrano is on top of his game. You don't figure to score a lot of runs against him. So at some point, you have to draw the line and say, that's enough. I'm not going to allow the youngster to give up anymore. We're going to have a tough time scoring runs against Big Z today. But then you also have to look forward. Kyle Loesch taking the mound for the Cardinals tomorrow, coming off a complete game. So you'd like to possibly have some bullpen ready just in case he needs some help tomorrow. And you would really hate to exhaust your pen early in today's game knowing you may need him tomorrow. Well, they're down one arm out there is uh, Josh Kinney was optioned to Triple A Memphis to make room for Walters on their roster today. They used a couple of relievers yesterday McClellan and Franklin. Another 3 2 pitch and Derek went too far. That's a strikeout. And just found out the home plate umpire made the call Sam Holbrook. And the inning is over. Cubs get one, but again, they had them loaded with no outs. Three.
to visit the WGN Sports. Com, brought to you by the Great Escape for up to the minute stats and information designed to give you everything you need to know during the game. WGN Sports Game Zone available for every Cubs game. It's brought to you by the Great Escape. Pools, patio sets, play sets, hot tubs, and more. Here one landing. I tip my cap to Sam Holbrook, the home plate umpire. Has called out both number three hitters on check swings today, and both times I didn't think they went, but on further review, he was right both times. Eric didn't like the call, but the, the replay seemed to indicate that it was the right call. One and one on Brian Barton. He's not batting like an eight hitter. Two home runs on this trip. Off to a really good start. Troy Gloss, recovering from shoulder surgery, is on the disabled list. Colby Rasmus taking it all in here at Wrigley. Lead off walk. First one surrendered by Z. And Walters is. Well, that was quick. Jose Okendo came down and said one thing to him. Took Doesn't about three seconds. Doesn't take bunt. long to say bunt, yeah. It's foul. Talked about the Cardinals pitchers and their approach to sacrifice bunts. We saw it with Adam Wainwright in the game yesterday. We'll see it again tomorrow with Kyle Loesch should the situation arise. Todd Wellemeyer. They show bunt early. Pull the bat back and then either come back around and bunt again or go ahead and swing away. Now given the fact that Walters is making his first major league start he uh, doesn't appear to be on the same page as the rest of the Cardinal pitchers but I'm sure he will be if he stays up here long enough. Square around early show bunt try to get that defense to move a few steps then pull the bat back as the pitcher gets into the set position and then either square around and bunt or go ahead and slash away. That's a strikeout on the foul bunt attempt. Five for Z first out of the inning. Was not too far away from uh, jumping into sixth on the Cubs list. Bill Hutchinson with 1,222 career strikeouts. Z now with 1,190. Yeah, very close at first. Well, that's a great time to snap a throw over there. We've shown you shots in the past of that base runner getting out there taking his lead and trying to peek in and see the catcher signs. Oh, it just snuck past Z who just slammed his glove down to the mound. That ball was hit a lot harder than I think Z thought. By the time he put his glove down it was already past him. Come comeback are right over the bump out there in the middle of the field. Just right underneath the glove of Carlos Zambrano. Your first instinct as a pitcher is to protect yourself out there on the mound. And then you try to make the play defensively. And you can see Carlos slamming his glove down, very reminiscent of Ted Lilly in Arizona a couple years ago. So Schumacher is on, two on for Rasmus. Here's the pitch off the outside edge. Z threw 118 pitches over his six innings. In the don't, no decision against Milwaukee six days ago. But again, an extra day of rest. This is his home debut for 2009. Oh, man, that was close. <laughs> Brian Barden's almost been picked off two different bases. Boy, that's a tough one for an umpire to call. The throw was high. Terrio had to catch it up around chest level. 
His glove was right there next to Barden. He's insisting that he had that tag on Barden before he got his foot on the bag. Very close. Rolled off the foot of Rasmus, so it's foul. I mean, most of the time the umpires are trained to look at the base. You watch the guy's foot, you watch the tag. It's all right there in front of you below the knees, but that time the throw was chest high. Terrio made the catch, made the tag. Pretty tough for an umpire to see both things, a chest high tag and a foot on the base at the same time. Inside. And it's two and one. Cubs have outplayed the Cardinals early on, but St. Louis has the tying run at the plate. And Lee with the pick. Then he dropped it, and he will not get the out on another close play. Rasmus just beat the toss, and they are loaded for Pujols. Well, that one was scalded. Derek was able to knock it down. One hopper on the backhand side. He was going to go for the force play at second base. And when he went to get the ball out of his glove, it just squirted away. Tries to shovel it onto Big Z cover in the bag, but too much speed. Trouble. Yeah, with a capital T. They gave Rasmus a hit. And now Z will try to get a strikeout or a double play ball. That's how the infield is aligned. Base is loaded for Pujols. Big swing, and he just got a piece of it. Yikes. 391 in this spot. Fly to left. Soriano's coming over. Near the line, he has it. Pujols will end up with a sack fly. And it's somewhat of a victory for Zambrano because they got him out. 14th RBI of the year. It's now 3 1. Barden crossing the plate with their first tally. Damage control right there. I tell you, most situations with the bases loaded, Albert Pujols at the plate, you'll take a sacrifice fly. This guy is one of the most deadly hitters in all of baseball. He's used to driving in multiple runs in that situation, but the fly ball to left field only drives home one teammate. Zambrano, one out away from getting out of trouble. Ryan Ludwig has just given the Cardinals the lead to the back of the bleachers and left. And just like that, the Cubs are trailing. Well, they got three in the first two innings, but it felt like they should have had a lot more. And all of a sudden, this powerful Cardinal offense comes right back with four big ones. Hanging slider in the middle of the plate for Ludwig. That got his bat head out in front of the plate. Got some lift on that ball. Man, that went a lot further than I thought it was going to when he made contact. That ball was way in the back of the bleachers in left field. Uh, you pointed out the key to maybe their season, and that is Ryan Ludwig duplicating what he did last year behind Albert Pujols. A 2-0 to Duncan, and he hits it foul. Well, again, now you look at these last three starts against the Cardinals. They've all been here. Gave up nine runs on August 9th of last year and just four and a third. Eight runs in an inning and two-thirds on the 19th of September. And he's allowed four early on today, and Duncan with a base hit. Ludwig and Duncan continuing their hitting streaks. Ludwig at 20 and Duncan now at 11. And here comes Larry Rothschild. They got to find a way to refocus now. Zambrano has been upset in this inning since he missed that comebacker through the mound off the bat of Skip Schumacher. 
Hey, recall he threw his glove down on the mound, and uh, things have kind of come unraveled since then. We'll get back in that strike zone with quality pitches. And you can certainly understand, and I'm not saying this is the case with Zambrano, but any pitcher facing Albert Pujols with the bases loaded, and you know you're going to have to grind and make some of your best pitches of the day. You get a sack fly to left field, a run scores. It's understandable. You take a deep breath. Okay, that wasn't so bad, and then you make a mistake to the next hitter, and Ludwig hits a three-run bomb. And you go back to how this inning started a walk to the number eight hitter granted he's hot. But this is the sort of lineup the way it's constructed. You don't want to face anybody at the top of their order with men on base. Molina skies to right, sending Hawk power over near the sidewall, and it's foul. It hit the wall, which is in foul territory, but he banged right into that padding. I think there's padding there. He's had a couple balls over in that corner already in the two days he's played right field here this season. Yeah, that ball actually hit up on the, uh, what would you call that, the ledge. the ledge of the wall down the right field line, and ricocheted back over Micah's head into fair territory, but. Ran him right up against the pad out there once again. Al McCray enjoying what he's seen early on in the season, a hitting coach. Fair ball backhanded by Ramirez. He'll toss over to Lee, and that's the inning. But a damaging one as the Cardinals grab the advantage. Three run homer by Ludwig. It's 4 3, St. Louis. Having fun on the rooftops across Waveland and Sheffield. So back to offense as Michael Hoffpower, who knocked in a run with a double in the first inning, leading it off. He's the cleanup man. Yummy, yummy. Base hit center field. Hoffpower's two for two. 
The 2009 Chicago Cubs baseball season on WGN is brought to you by Bud Light. The difference is drinkability. Aramis with an RBI single his first time up. Boy, there have been a lot of conversations on the field with P.J. Walters. Third base coach a couple of times talked to him during an at bat Molina. Just went out there. They try to encourage him along. He now has his first lead of the day. Very short lead by Hawk Power at first. Ball strike. One and one on Aramis. Back is still not 100%. Didn't feel great on a diving play made yesterday, but he looked fine. And he's back in there today. That really seems to bother him the most when he swings and misses. You know, batter gets that bat into the hitting zone. You expect contact uh, before your follow through. And when you swing and miss, uh, things just come apart a little bit at the end of the swing. And that's when we've noticed uh, Ramirez kind of taking a little extra time, flexing that back, bending over, stretching out a little bit. The 2 1 on the way. It's right down the middle. Seeing Walter's fastball mid to upper 90 or upper 80s at best. This one in the mid 80s and a riser. Struck him out on a slider. Number four for Walters. Well, and sometimes a pitcher will have rotation on his slider that's very easy to pick up for a hitter. Very flat. You can see it coming right out of the pitcher's hand. You can read the break very easily. Other times a guy can disguise that rotation. Get a little more on top of the ball, have a little more of what they call a dot slider as it comes up to home plate, and that's tougher for the hitter to pick up. Swing and a miss. Soriano Ramirez now Soto swinging and missing at that slider must not be able to pick it up quickly out of Walter's hand. Well, he was a strikeout pitcher in the minors. He had one strikeout per inning. At triple A last year he was seventh in the PCL with 122 strikeouts in 122 innings. Had a big year in 07, went to three different levels. Started out in A ball, moved to high A ball, uh, ended up in double A ball, was the Cardinals minor league pitcher of the year back in 07. 0 02 to Soto. That missed one and two. Soto's had a tough day. A double play and now a strikeout. Two outs. Visibly frustrated after this swing. And once again, comes on that slider. That one had a little more downward movement than sweep on it. Soto swings right over the top. Well, then bad hitters usually don't get frustrated. <laughs> you, you take the bad at bats. You'll take a double play. You'll take your strikeouts because you get used to it. You know it's going to happen over the course of the season. But when good hitters struggle, it gets very frustrating. Your own expectations for what you should do up there at the plate are a lot higher, especially after an offensive year like Geo had last season. We'll get it going. 1-1 one, one on Fontenot. Lead off single by Hawk Power. He's still at first. Walters at the belt. And 
ready for a 2 1. Boy, he's getting a lot of waves. And all of his pitches now, two and two. Five strikeouts already. Jammed in that time and fouled off. That was an interesting ride. Is that how you're getting home tonight? <laughs> Maybe. Good way to stay in shape. Yeah, it's a good workout. Knocked down by Walters. And it becomes an easy play. He played goalie on that hot shot. 4-3 St. Louis after three. Lennon Bob and our WGN sports crew from beautiful Wrigley Field. 4 3 St. Louis. Joe Thurston bunts, but he popped it up right to Zambrano. Stay informed throughout the 2009 season with MLB.com team text alerts and video alerts. Customize your mobile alerts, including news, game summaries, scores, and more. Sign up now by texting get Cubs to 65246 or visit MLB.com forward slash mobile. Outside corner fastball at 93 on Brian Barden who walked and scored. In the last inning. Ramirez at the edge of the grass at third. And Barden was late on the swing two strikes. Thanks to Ryan Dempster for joining us on the leadoff man. He'll go into his start tomorrow against Kyle Loesch at 1 and 0. Loesch is 2 and 0 with a 1.13. It'll be a 2.40 first pitch. 7.05 Sunday night. Todd Wellemeyer, the former Cub, versus left-hander Ted Lilly. The Cubs will be off Monday. And then the Reds come in. Tuesday. That's a base hit for Barden. And Hoff Power picks it up. The throw to second. A little bit late. Well played by Hoff Power. He kept that ball from getting by him. If it gets by him, that's a triple or a double and an error. Or worse, yeah. Uh, that's about as good as you can do at trapping that ball against the sidewall down there. We saw Soriano have some problems with one in the ball game yesterday. You're just never quite sure where that ball is going to bounce. If it hits below the padding, 
There's bricks down there, and that ball will come shooting out off the wall. If it hits the padding, it's liable to die right there. Hoffbauer just does what he thinks is the right thing, just kind of squares up to it, tries to block it, keep it in front, and his throw was just a little bit late to second base. So is the swing by Walters. Struck out trying to bunt his first time, and that late swing helps him. She does move the runner to third. There are two outs. Speaking of that Red series, there are still tickets available throughout the season, especially for that set. Reds coming in Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Visit Cubs.com, stop by the Wrigley Field box office, or call 1 800 the Cubs. The off day Monday will be the uh, final one for the Cubs until May 11th. They'll have 20 in a row without an off day. 21st of April through the 10th of May. The Cardinals with just one off day in their first 34 games of the season. Which is pretty rare. Ball two to Skip Schumacher. Make it two and one. Second base was in flux during the winter. Adam Kennedy was released in February. About a week before spring training, Felipe Lopez, Aaron Miles signed elsewhere over the winter. So they took Skip Schumacher, an outfielder, and said, Can you play second? He said, Sure. I'd like to keep his bat in the lineup. He hit over 300 last year. They have a lot of outfielders. And they have some interchangeable parts on the infield. We've seen Brian Barton start at third base yesterday. Shortstop today. Thurston can play all three infield positions. Colby Rasmus plays all over the field. I mean, it's, this figures to be a fun team for Tony La Russa as much as he likes to push buttons and move guys around, change his batting order, try to play matchups against an opposing pitcher. Two walks for Zambrano. He faces Rasmus. Well, I think based on what we've seen here the last couple of days, uh, Ryan Ludwig's days as a fourth outfielder are done. I mean, Tony was trying to rotate, get everybody playing time, get everybody at bats early in the season, but boy, after the breakout offensive year that Ryan Ludwig had last year and what he's done in this series, I think he's uh, earned his spot out there in right field on a full-time basis again. Oh, one to Rasmus pulled foul. Oh, two, a fly in the left, and a backpedaling Soriano put the clamps on the third out. A double a walk, but they strand two. Cardinals lead 4-3 to the bottom of the fourth.
Cardinals four, Cubs three. Eight, nine, and one for the home team. Starting with Ryan Terrio. And he takes a strike from the rookie Walters. You look for every bit of information when you, you face a pitcher you haven't seen. And one resource for the Cubs is their uh, minor league pitching coordinator, Mark Riggins, who's in his second season with the Cubs. Spent 29 years in the Cardinal organization. Now, many times when you face a pitcher you've never seen before coming up from the minor leagues, you get your report from your minor league affiliates. If they have seen the guy uh, recently or in the past year or so, just to, to get a rough scouting report on what to expect. But having Mark Riggins. Uh, Probably the best source to go to to get a scouting report on the rookie Walters. Finishing up his second time through the order, he's been much more effective this time around. First time through, two walks and five hits. And yet another full count, three and two, with Zambrano on deck. Take today's weather pretty much every day the rest of the year. Fine with me. It'll be a little chilly in the shade for those fans that are uh, out of the sun right now, but just a beautiful afternoon. Scooped by Thurston and a strong throw right on the money. Wrigleyville Rooftops has premier seating for up to 200 guests for corporate gatherings, family reunions, and bachelor and bachelorette parties. Individual and group tickets are available for all games. For more details, go to WrigleyvilleRooftops.com or call 773-248-ROOF. Well, we might add that the broadcasters are available for the bachelorette parties as well. I was thinking it. You said it. <laughs> One and one on Z. Of course, I was speaking to Sano and Pat Hughes. <laughs> sure, you were. A wine in the two one. Z shooting for the seats, and he missed it. He walked his first time. Len, I'm not sure, but I did hear a rumor that Pat and Ron, yes, indeed, they slid their window open a little bit today. There's actually some air in that booth. They have to breathe. I said air, not hair. Could he walk twice in a row? He's seeing a lot of pitches. Oh, really late. He waited back. He couldn't find it. A late breaking slider starts on the outside corner comes right over the heart of the plate by the time Z realized that was going to be a good pitch. It's a little bit of an emergency swing just trying to foul it off and stay alive but he comes up in. Soriano is struck out twice. Walters was in survival mode the first time through the order. He is uh, definitely finding his groove. 
five strikeouts the second time through the order and only one hit. Many times it's just the reverse. An unfamiliar pitcher has a lot of early success and then guys talk in the dugout about what he has and then they have success later. But it is really turned around the other way. And he strikes out Soriano for the third time. We have finished four and the Cardinals behind PJ Walters lead by. Howard Pujols fouls away as we're underway in the fifth. Big blast to this point. Ryan Ludwig's three run homer. Pujols hit a sack fly in the third, and then Ludwig followed up with a long home run. In the dirt. Congratulations to Ichiro. Career hit number 3,086. That's a, a new record for Japanese players. Got it last night against the Angels. He passed Iseo Harimoto, who was in attendance. Just came off the DL. Ichiro had a bleeding ulcer. Was on the DL for the first time in his career. Left hander Trevor Miller is up for the Cardinals. There's ball four, and it's a leadoff walk. Walk number three for Zambrano. Here's Ludwig for the third time. Strike one. Nationals finally get their first win. Beat the Phillies on Thursday, and they're now one and seven. They're six and a half games out. Florida's eight and one. The Marlins with the best record in baseball. They just swept the Braves at Turner Field for the first time.
little floater, and Fontenot couldn't get it. And Pujols will end up at third. Mike may have misjudged it for just a second. Looked like there was a little hesitation before he went back on it, and he just couldn't reach and grab it. An infielder depends so much on his sense of hearing, and that was a jam shot broken bat. I think Mike was caught by surprise how far the ball carried off that broken bat just over his outstretched glove as he dives out into shallow right field. That was either a real good read by Albert Pujols or he was going to get doubled off regardless of what happened right there. You could see as Fontenot went out into shallow right field to try to make that catch. Pujols ran right past him around second base and on to third. Fontenot comes up with that diving catch, an easy double play. More trouble for Z in the middle of the order. And Soto will go and chat with him after he missed against Duncan. Happy birthday wishes go out to Brittany Bircham. Gio last year was not afraid to uh, get one of his pitchers' faces if there's something he had to say. And he's been working with Z for quite some time. It's an important part of the catcher's game. I mean, Gio is struggling with the bat at the plate, and some guys, when they're struggling offensively, will hesitate to take charge defensively. You need your catcher more than any other player to separate the two. High and deep to right over in the corner. Is Hoff power? He makes a catch. Pujols will tag and score, and the Cardinals lead by two. It's a sacrifice fly for Chris Duncan. Well, the aggressive base running by Albert Pujols put him on third base. Where he's able to tag and score easily on this deep fly ball down into the right field corner. Molina high in the air, and it's Hoff power again. And Ludwig will head back to first. Mike has been busy these two days in right. The pitcher Walters has thrown 98 pitches and seems to be getting stronger through four. Now Miller is up in their bullpen. But we'll see how Tony will map it out. Cubs have two lefties due up in the bottom of the fifth. We talk about this a lot the idea of trying to give your starter a chance to get a win and what would be Walters' major league debut, but you know, all the Cardinals are thinking about is win. Team win. So we'll see what happens. Well, I imagine a lot of it has to do also with what are the plans for P.J. Walters after today. Is he going to stay at the major league level and fill that spot in the rotation permanently? Or is he a guy that they're just going to spot in for a start? Send him back down to the minor leagues, let him continue to pitch down there at that level, and they could reach down for him again later in the season if they needed him. If that's the case, you might extend him a little longer than you normally would. A ball of two strikes on Thurston. This is fourth major league team. He's been a Dodger, a Philly. He was with the Red Sox and now the Cardinals. Some pretty storied franchises for Joe Thurston. Two time Dodger minor league player of the year in 2000 and again in 2002.
Deuces are wild out on the board. And a ground ball to Ramirez. Throw will go over to first. Cardinals add to their lead. Halfway home on this beautiful Friday. Cubs need to get their offense back in gear. They trail by two. at the Illinois Lottery. Unfortunately for the Cubs, P.J. Walters was able to settle in after struggling in the first two innings. It didn't look like it was going to be a lot of fun for the rookie in the early going, but he found his slider. He found the bottom of the strike zone and pitched very effectively through four innings after a rocky start. It's today's have a ball thanks to the Illinois Lottery. So the Cardinals dip into their pin and left-hander Trevor Miller is on. Starter can't get the win. Somebody out of their bullpen, if this lead holds up, would get it. But there's a long way to go. We're only in the fifth. The Cardinals lead by two. Fukudome, Lee, and Hawk power here in this inning. Miller was with the American League champion Tampa Bay Rays last year. Cardinals signed him as a free agent. And Koske was tardy on a swing. 91 on a fastball. That's eight strikeouts for Cardinals pitching. Seven by Walters. Right hander Mitchell Boggs beginning to warm up down in that Cardinals bullpen. As Len mentioned, two of the first three hitters here in this inning for the Cubs left handers. We've seen Fukudome go down on strikes. Now Derek Lee and then Micah Hoffpower, another lefty. After that, we may see Boggs. Pulled in the left, the base hit for Lee, his second of the day. Hey, Lynn Addison Stiller wants to say hi to her uncle Matt Stiller, and uh, we would like to welcome him home. He's a corporal in the U.S. Marine Corps who was at the game today after serving over in Iraq for the past several months. Welcome home to Matt Stiller from his niece Addison. You'd like to send us an email? It's WGN Cubs TV at AOL.com. Off power fouls it on, off the end of the bat, right near Aramis Ramirez in the on deck circle. Got a nice letter from Tom Gelfan from Brooklyn, New York. Big Cubs fan. Missed on a breaker. One ball, one strike. Miller's been around. This is his seventh major league team in his ninth organization. 
Another ball got out of the bullpen. He's ready for a 1 1. Hoff power hits it foul. Well, the, the time off for Micah didn't cool him off. It's really kind of surprising for a guy that was getting as many at bats in spring training as Micah Hoffbauer was getting. I mean, he was in the lineup almost every day at either first base, right field, DHing. He was getting at bats on a regular basis, and it's not uncommon for those kind of players to start the season on the bench, pick up a pinch hit at bat or two, and suddenly lose any edge that you had down in the Cactus League. But Micah looks very comfortable up there at the plate today. Lee almost got picked off. He Headed towards second as Pujols was off the base, but Miller threw to the bag. But both guys had to get back there quickly. Now to the plate, a cold way foul into the upper deck. Cardinal fans. Having way too much fun at the moment. Old school Willie McGee jersey. Swing and a miss. Strike three. While we have a moment, let's step aside and see what's coming up on WGN. Lee still at first, two outs, and Aramis Ramirez takes ball one. Nice note uh, a little while ago from uh, Paul Sullivan from the Chicago Tribune. He pointed out Aramis with a 549 slugging percentage as a Cub going into this season. Third on the all time franchise list. He pulls that one down the left field line. Fair. Lee racing around third. Mike Quaddy sends him. Relay throw to the plate. Not in time. It's 5 4. Slugging percentage will go up a little bit for Aramis. On the RBI double. Now, Tony La Russa rolled the dice, stayed with the lefty Trevor Miller to face the right handed hitting Aramis Ramirez, and Ramirez makes him pay. Able to keep that ball fair down into the left field corner, short hops the wall out there at the 355 mark. Derek Lee off on contact with two outs, able to motor all the way around and score. Soto for two. Tying run in scoring position. In the right, this is slicing. It's a base hit. Ramirez will score. He better hurry, I'll tell you what. <laughs> he really slowed down halfway between third and home. And Bob, I don't know if Pujols realized that he might have had a play on Aramis. It's 5-5. Five, five. See Gio getting a base hit, going to the opposite field with a fast ball away. And you're right, Ludwig got rid of that ball quickly, got it back into Pujols. If Pujols would have wheeled and thrown home, it was going to be close. Boy, as a base runner, you should always go hard until you hit that disc because you don't know what's happening with the trail runners behind you. Giovanni Soto made him take a too big a turnaround first base. And if he's tagged out before Ramirez gets on the plate, the run does not count. Cup fans are back in it. 
It's two and nothing on Fontenot. Back to back, two out, RBI hits. I'll tell you, then you know some of the writers here from St. Louis are going to want to ask Tony LaRusso. You had a right hander warmed up in the bullpen. Why did you let Trevor Miller face all those right handed hitters? And he normally uh, will play those lefty righty matchups. And he may say, look, it's a fifth inning. I've got a bullpen that I'm trying to save, but he does have the righty up, and right now he's just watching. Fly ball to center, Rasmus drifting back. And yeah, with his heels on the warning track, he records the third and final out. But the Cubs have tied it up. Seesaw Bear from Wrigley. It's now 5 5. Still doing it. Aramis Ramirez with an RBI double and then scored the tying run. He was protecting his back as he crossed the plate. And there's a deep drive. And just like that, Brian Barden gives the Cardinals the lead again. It's six to five. That's reminiscent of Khalil Green tying it up yesterday. After the Cubs had taken the lead. Oh, Brian Barden, of all people, making his presence felt in this series. Had two singles and a home run in the ball game yesterday. It's his second hit of the game today to go along with a base on balls. He is a one-man wrecking crew down that eight spot in the lineup. That is their second blast of the day. The Ludwig three run homer came back in the third. This is David Freeze batting for Miller, and he pops it up. And Lee will catch it. Hey, fans, don't miss the action as the Cubs battle the Reds next Tuesday, April 21st. Game time is 7.05, but be sure to arrive early. The first 10,000 fans. Will receive an exclusive limited edition Carlos Zambrano no hitter statue. Compliments of Fisher Nuts. Now it's Schumacher, the leadoff man. Strike one. Tapper passed Zambrano, but Carlos covering the bag. It goes three to one. For you youngsters out there, that's how you do it if you're a pitcher. Get off the mound quickly and get right over to first after the ball gets by it. Yeah, that's your job on any ground ball hit to the right side of the field, even a ground ball hit toward the second baseman. Uh, you're not sure 
defensively what that first baseman's going to do if he goes over in the hole to make a play. Somebody's got to cover first. Colby Rasmus to deep center. Koske on the track. Cardinals lead again on the Barton homer at 6 to 5. game summary. P.J. Walters made his major league debut for the Cardinals. He went four innings, gave up three earned runs, left with the lead. Carlos Zambrano walked at the plate for the sixth time in his career, but he's also given up six Cardinal runs. Visit your Honda dealer and test drive a 2009 Honda Accord. Righty Mitchell Boggs is on to work for the Cardinals and uh, one thing looking ahead in this series you know Tony La Russa is going to need is a long outing from Kyle Loesch tomorrow. He got a complete game three hit shutout his last start. But the bullpen's been busy. Nobody up in the Cubs pen and Zambrano is on deck now walking toward the plate after Terrio grounds out. A special hello to Fergie Jenkins in town this week promoting his new book Fergie My Life from the Cubs to Cooperstown and will be on the air live at 1230 Sunday May 3rd for two legends one number number 31 will be retired for the Hall of Famer Fergie Jenkins and the future Hall of Famer Greg Maddox join us Sunday May 3rd at 12:30, and we'll have all the action as the Cubs host the Florida Marlins. Z hits it foul. One ball one strike. Tapped near the plate and it actually rolled and then hit Z's foot. Meet the team, have a ball is back. It'll be on Wednesday, May 13th at 2 30. Visit Cubs.com, call 773 404 Cubs for more information. That's a great event. Swing and a miss, strike three. You think about the day with breaking ball. Soriano's had, Bob, three strikeouts, all of the swinging variety. But if he can get a hold of one here, he can tie it up. 
Duncan, however, will catch on the run, and that's it. Cubs go down very quickly in the sixth. On to the seventh, 6 5 St. Louis. Bud Light Fan Cam, a song chosen by our truck engineer, Danny Mahar. Red Light by The Strokes. Bud Light fan cam with just the right taste that never fills you up. The difference is drinkability. A roller to the shortstop, Terrio, throws out Albert Pujols. Bears kicker, Robbie Gold, will conduct a stretch coming up. Is that who I think it is? <laughs> That's Eleanor. Yeah. I'm sure that's not a real bird. No, no, no. no you go no. to the craft shops. You can find stuff like that to, to use for decorative purposes. And Eleanor chose to use it on top of her Cubs hat. It's great to see Eleanor Farrell. Ball park. Outside. One and one. And Ryan Ludwig. Towering fly deep to left. And he got enough for his second home run of the day. Seven to five. His manager is going to say, okay, I get it. Get it. But as you said just a few days ago, he was not playing every single day. But uh, that's going to change. Yeah, he was a guy that was just in the outfield mix. Apparently, he doesn't like being in the mix. He wants to be in the lineup. This has been, uh, Bob, a, a troubling trend that has developed in terms of Carlos against the Cardinals and it can it can turn around but he's going to face this team a lot this season it has not gone well for him now his last three starts against a team that's pretty similar to the one he saw late last year Boy, and very good through the first two innings of this game struck out two in the first inning two in the second inning gave up only the one base hit to Yadier Molina that came to the opposite field but then the wheels came off in the third. The Cardinals have had some real good at bats against Big Z since then. You know, 
one point uh, the last two outs of the first inning and the first two outs of the second inning he looked unhittable. It's a strikeout of Duncan. Yeah, five punch outs. Into the third inning and that's his first since. Number seven on the day, six on the day. Yadier Molina with two outs. Have dropped their last two. After a five and two start. And that's foul and out of play. The other thing is Carlos has given up seven runs on a day in which Albert Pujols doesn't have a hit. Now he does have a sack fly a walk and a run but 0 for 2. But he hasn't done the damage. Time to sing the stretch with Robbie Gold. For take me out to the ball game is Chicago Bears kicker Robbie Gold. All right Cub fans let me hear you. A one. A two. A three. Take me out to the ball. Some runs. Gold with our ceremonial first pitch. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, very nice. Oh, he's done this a few times. This is a no big deal. But Robbie, I'm a bet to this, you know. <laughs> a lot of changes for the Cardinals. Box still on the mound. Barton's now at third. The old one to Koske is driven deep. Ludwig chasing and he'll have to play it off the wall as Koske will pull up at second with a double tying run is at the plate. Don't go anywhere. This has been one of those days. From our Southwest Sky Cam, you see Koske Fukudomi picking on a breaking ball, lining it into the gap in right center field. Well, that wind has been steadily blowing in from right field throughout this ball game, but it really hasn't affected any of the balls hit in play to the outfield today. Derek Lee at the plate. Two hits and three tries. He scored twice. And he takes 
Ball one. Other changes quickly. Brendan Ryan's playing short. Joe Thurston moves over to second, and that puts Skip Schumacher in left. So Chris Duncan is out for the Cardinals. Swing and the miss. One and one. Robbie, the big talk around the Bears and around town is Jake Cutler. And he got a great hand last night at the United Center. Yeah, I heard he uh, was gonna, getting ready to come out here to throw the first pitch tomorrow. So I had to throw a little heat in there for him. So I, you know, <laughs> put a little pressure on him. But, uh, Swing and a miss. We're really excited. You know, uh, obviously, we have a lot of respect for Kyle Orton. He did a lot of great things for this organization. Um, he's going to do great in Denver, and we wish him the very best. And, you know, now we're embracing Jay in here as the uh, starting quarterback for the Chicago Bears. And, you know, it's definitely uh, created a lot of attention in the city of Chicago. And I think that's what we need as a team is uh, to create that. Right center, Ludwig with a long run, but he'll get there in plenty of time. And that is the first out. Well, the one thing we know when it comes to baseball, football, every sport is that change is inevitable. And you know, I'm sure there's a little sadness at the end of every season, whether it's in the playoffs or the regular season ends. You know that that roster is not going to be exactly the same the following year. Oh, absolutely. You know, you see that on every professional sports team. When you look out here at the Cubs, you know, there's a couple guys that uh, were not here last year. But at the same time, you know, you're always looking for the certain people to fill those gaps. Uh, that maybe you thought you didn't necessarily have the year before. So, um, you know, they made a they made a big time move to enhance our offensive line, and they did that by getting Orlando Pace the same day they got Jay Cutler, and uh, hopefully um, our offense will be going on full cylinders come uh, opening day. One ball, no strikes. Uh, Michael Hoffpower, Fogs with the pitch. Inside 2 and 0, oh, Hoff Power with two hits. Well, one thing we know about the Bears uh, that will stay constant, at least through 0 13, 2013. You're signed a long term contract. That has to be very uh, comforting to you. You know, it's awesome, um, especially to come out on days like this where you get in, in, in Wrigley Field, first of all, to throw the, the first pitch. It's as funny. I was here probably 14 years ago when the Women's World Cup was here. And uh, I had a bro program, and I broke it out. And there's guys like Michael Jordan. You know, you think of guys like Michael J. Fox the other day. You know, when you get a chance to get in company like that and realize how great of a city it is for sports, I mean, there was a no-brainer for, for, for me to sign, re-sign here. It's just a matter of uh, the Bears doing it. And, they, you know, they did a great job last year keeping everyone around. And now they're uh, picking and choosing the guys to bring in to add to our roster to, to help us out and make that playoff push. And, um, I love it here, you know, and I'm excited about staying for five more years, and hopefully uh, at the end of that we'll be here for a lot longer. Time called before a 2-0 offering. Well, you're the all-time uh, field goal percentage leader at Soldier Field, which I would assume is one of the tougher fields to kick field goals in. You know what? I was, Kevin Butler's here somewhere today, and we've had a lot of conversations about it, and um, I think it might have been a little tougher when he kicked because uh, – how our stadium is set is, you know, it's kind of like a spaceship, and only half of it's open. When Kevin kicked, he says the whole thing was open. So, you know, uh, it's definitely a tough place to kick, and you get used to it when you do it every day in practice, and it's one thing that you don't really think about that opposing teams think about. And I'm sure, you know, except for the Cardinals, I mean, obviously they're in some cold weather, but, um, you know, you get some dome teams to come up here and play. They're obviously worried about the cold weather and the, and the wind as well. So... Uh, it plays on every Chicago sport, except for the uh, the Blackhawks and the Bulls. <laughs> and it actually uh, came into play when the Blackhawks uh, played the Winter Classic here at Wrigley Field. With the uh, conditions, it was a pretty nice day, overcast, wasn't that cold. I would love to see them bring a, a Bears football game here like it used to be and play a game. You know, they're, they're taking games in the National Football League and playing, uh, you know, in overseas, in uh, Mexico, city to you know even Canada but I think it'd be awesome to have a game here it'd be great off power strikes out so Boggs came back it was three and oh and he ends up fanning off power so two outs in the inning uh, uh, go ahead Bob I was just gonna say how cool would that be to kick a field goal out onto Sheffield Avenue you know what I would definitely try and warm up in case it didn't happen during the game that'd be awesome it'd be, I guess you know, it'd be something similar to the to a walk off home run, you know, and uh, it'd be pretty cool. I don't know who I have to talk to or if you guys can help me out. Maybe we can get that done. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> Ramirez in on the hands. He fouled it back. Uh, we heard from a reliable source. And in this business, usually you go with two sources. We're only going with one that uh, you got engaged or something. Do we hear about 
I did actually. Congratulations. You know, thank you very much. I'm really excited about it. That's great. Do you have a date yet? Uh, not yet. We don't. Okay. Uh, Got to pick that out between uh, all the football schedule. Maybe I can get him to get him a couple weeks off in the middle of the season. You think that will happen? I wouldn't hold my breath for that one. And, Robbie, I would recommend this advice to you. <laughs> Practice this phrase often because you're going to need it. <laughs> yes, dear, you're right. I'm sorry. Even if you're wrong, that's what I've been told. Absolutely. <laughs> Ground ball, base hit. Koske is in 7-6. to six. Ramirez has knocked in three today. Another two out RBI for Aramis. Well, I don't believe Aramis Ramirez is back to full 100% strength yet, but from our Southwest Sky Cam, he just squeaks that ground ball through the middle of the field. Brendan Ryan at shortstop was shading over into the gap between third and short, had a lot of ground to cover and could not get there. Soto looks at a strike on a breaker. 11 hits for the Cubs. The Cardinals have nine. They are clinging to a one run lead. I got to ask you, Robbie, I, I, we got your bio sheet up here. 99 out of 100 points after. Now I got to ask you, what happened on the one that you missed? Uh, I was in Pittsburgh, and I honestly, God, just missed it. Um, it was snowing, it was cold, and. It was my rookie year, so, you know, everything's kind of a whirlwind, and there's no excuse for it, obviously, <laughs> you know, but uh, you're human, and you got to bounce back, and, you know, the biggest thing is that you obviously want to put your team in the best position. You always got to make the extra point. You always got to make your field goals. That's your job, and, um, you know, sometimes you learn that the hard way, and, uh, you know, lucky enough, knock on wood, that uh, I've been able to, to put my team and have a lot of help to get me in a great position to make field goals. Could use that extra point right now. Cubs trail 7-6. I'll take the field goal to put us up if you don't yeah, mind. There you there go. You know, I like it. Yeah. I'll take a little cushion going into the eighth. Three and two with two outs as Ramirez is on the run. Ball four. Winning still alive for Fontenot. Dave Duncan heading out towards the mound. We've asked you this before. We've had you in the booth, but uh, in terms of your kicking regimen in the off season, what uh, what kinds of things do you do? Um, you know, we do a lot of lifting and running, and uh, we just started two weeks ago, uh, actually kicking again. Um, I took a lot of time this off season. I stayed around this uh, Chicago area and uh, worked out really hard to get a lot stronger. And um, you know, it's kind of tough sitting at home watching all the playoffs and. Watching the Pittsburgh Steelers, who's close to my home, uh, obviously win uh, another title. But uh, especially when you're there and you lose, you still have that sour taste, and you got to get that winning, uh, you know, that winning feeling back. And I think uh, with the addition of Jay and uh, Orlando, and hopefully uh, through the draft picks that we get, uh, we can get back to the playoffs. I know the city loves that time of the year, and uh, I know it's something that uh, we enjoy as well. One strike on Fontenot. Cardinals cranking it up in their bullpen. But Boggs in some trouble. Here in the seventh. One and one. Chris Perez is the righty. Dennis Reyes, veteran left-hander. And that's a strike. Bob, I hope you hope Ramirez can score on a single. We don't know whether it's because of the back injuries. You get another look at that called strike on a breaking ball, but he just has not been moving well on the bases here today. At the high strike call, particularly against Fonson, that was definitely up in the letters. I think that was the wind that moved that ball, wasn't it? <laughs> The kick and the one two pitch, and Fontenot went. And that'll end the inning. The Cubs do 
get one. They're within one. Robbie Gold, thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Have a great summer and uh, best of luck to the Bears in 2009. Thanks, guys. Go Cubs. All right. All right. Ramy said a nice day at the plate. He's made his hits count, three of them, and uh, they've all knocked in runs. Aaron Heilman is on in the eighth against Joe Thurston, and he pops it foul. So it's up to the bullpen now to try to hold him at seven. Pitch a little bit away on a fastball. Sometimes you get a feel for the ebb and the flow and the rhythm of a game. I have no idea what's going to happen over the final two innings. I just know it's not over. This is Terry o throws out a hustling Joe Thurston. Let's step aside and see what's coming up on WGN. Ryan Barden homered to lead off the sixth. And that gave the Cardinals their latest lead. Outside one and one. You know, and I've talked in the past about my days in Arizona and some of the minor league players that used to come over and fill out our roster for spring training games. Guys who are major contributors to big league clubs right now. Connor Jackson in Arizona. Carlos Quentin over on the south side with the White Sox. Dan Ugla with the Marlins. And Brian Barden was another one of those guys. So Arizona Diamondbacks farmhand. Played multiple positions even as a minor leaguer. And it uh, has earned him a spot up here on the major league roster. Forty thousand two hundred fifty packed into Wrigley Field today. Ooh. Three and two. 
just a little bit of late movement there. Took that ball off of the inside corner too far down and in. But that's a real good pitch from Aaron Highland. That's a ground ball waiting to happen. Boy, everything he throws moves. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Pounding the bottom of the strike zone comes back with an elevated fastball gets a swing and miss from the red hot Brian Barton. Rick Ankiel announced as a pinch hitter for Box. Every Cardinal has given up a run. Every Cardinal pitcher, Walters, Miller, and Box, but they lead the game 7 6. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. That's something they might have worn back in the uh, late 19th century with the uh, collars. That's for those guys that want to put in a half a day at work and then skip out at lunch <laughs> to go to the ball game. You just throw a tie and a coat on over that, and you're good to go. Well, Martin Hadlat, just a fan. Don't put the the big goal last night. Ooh, did he ever? I don't know if that shirt would go well with a tie. Ooh. Well, he wanted it up. That's where he got it. Soto wanted that pitch elevated. Two and two. That's that one down. And it's rocketed to right, and it's fair, just fair. Off power picks it up, and Keel with a double. Well, there's a fine line between a slider that's a hittable down and scooting it a little further down and getting a swing and a miss. That ball was right on the borderline, down another couple inches. You might get the swing and a miss, but as it is, and Keel rakes it down into that right field corner. What a nice play by Micah Hoffpower. Schumacher began the day at second. He's now in left. One thing about converting a position player moving into another spot gives him a little more versatility. Is really important in this league. And for a guy like Tony LaRusso, who likes to have a lot of moving parts in his lineup. That certainly keeps the Cardinals on their toes when they show up at the ballpark on a given day. Nobody's quite sure where they're going to be playing. A lot of interchangeable parts. This is game two of a 16 game season series. Seven of them, almost half, will be played over the next two weekends. Cubs have not lost a series yet. They're in jeopardy of dropping the first two games of this four gamer. They don't come back late. Talked to uh, reporters after the game yesterday about some of the bullpen issues, and I don't know what the exact quote was, but it was essentially we just need to pitch better. <laughs> and then Lou talking about his bullpen, he said, you know, just get people out. Just trying to keep it simple. Talk about throwing strikes all you want. The bottom line is to get people out. Uh, 
That's more our job and the writer's job to try to analyze and overanalyze and figure out reasons why things aren't working well. For those people down there in uniform, all they want to do is correct it and make good pitches and get people out. Bottom line is for those guys, it doesn't really matter what the reason is. Oh, my spring training was shortened uh, and I didn't get the work I needed. I had too much work in spring training. It doesn't matter. Go out and get it done. Yeah. Nobody wants to hear it. Our fans would like to have those W flags flying. They'll need a come back from the home team. One two jammed him and he'll fly out to Costco to end the eighth. We'll head to the bottom of the eighth. Ryan Terry will lead it off for the Cubs. Thomas Ramirez with a base hit and an RBI in the first inning. Came up in the fifth. And guess what he did? Doubled, drove in another run. Then in the seventh inning, another base hit back up the middle and another RBI. That's Aramis Ramirez, our AMPM player of the game. Too much good stuff. Right-hander Chris Perez is on. Aaron Miles, a former Cardinal on deck in the pitcher's spot. And a 1 0 pitch to Ryan Terrio at the knees. Strike one. One and one. Wednesday, two hitless, scoreless innings for Perez. One and two. And he was recalled prior to that game. Eleven saves last year for Perez. Little pop up foul territory and drop by Pools. So new life for Terrio. Oh, make it hurt. You That's see, an error. Yeah, you can see from the shadow right there as Pools walks back to his position. That ball was right up in the sun from our Southwest Sky Cam. Yeah, not only was it in the sun, he misjudged it badly, tried to make the. Uh, Shovel catch there in foul territory. The ball hit the heel of the glove and dropped out for an error. He's made three errors already this year. We'll get another chance here, and it'll go three to one. Now Aaron Miles batting for Heilman. Oh, yeah. 
Cardinals won a World Series ring in 06 with St. Louis. A lot of motivation for him to try to show the Cardinals they made a mistake and letting him sign with the Cubs over the winter. Tony Russo was quoted after that all happened and was really ruining the fact that Miles went elsewhere, praised him as a wonderful, quote, teammate. I heard the same thing from a couple of the Cardinals coaches before this series. They uh, really hated to see him go. Carlos Marmel cranking it up. Got a bloop and a blast right here. Get Marmel into the ball game with a chance to save one. Now you're not going to see Marmel and Greg up together. A ton because Kevin Gregg's situation coming off the knee surgery, he's kind of learning his body and how his knee reacts. When Gregg gets up, Lou wants to get him in. Three and one. Ball four. Time run is on. Brings up Soriano. Very quiet day. 0 for 4. Hot start. Four home runs. And they've all been big ones. Ball in there for a strike. Kick in the pitch, he hit it foul. Perez went to the University of Miami of Florida. As a supplemental round, 42nd overall pick in 2006. Saves last year, and actually 11 chances. He was seven out of 11, and he won three and lost three in 41 appearances. Just able to get a piece of that Perez slider off the outside corner. Perez's slider is not as big as the slider we saw from Walters earlier in the ball game that Fonzie was having so much trouble getting a look at. Perez throws a little bit more of a shorter, sharper slider, more like a fastball than a big sweeping breaking ball. Deep drive by Soriano out toward the wall. Cubs lead. <laughs> what a day. After an 0 for 4 start, it's a two run blast, and it's 8 7. And after watching his first three at bats of this ball game as he flailed away at that slider, if you'd have said Fonzie's going to hit a two run homer in the eighth inning off of a slider to give the Cubs a lead, nobody would have believed it. Our Southwest, how far did it fly? 371 feet. Unbelievable. Got the curtain call. Eight, seven Cubs. for a bloop and a blast, but instead we got a walk and a knock. We'll take it. They keep 
Phillips hitting big home runs. Third of the five he's hit coming in the late innings. And it is still just Marmel up, and he's he's ready for the ninth. Two and one on Koske. I'll tell you, Len, Yadier Molina must be getting paid by the hour. That's the kind of trip that a pitching coach takes to the mound when you're stalling for time. But Dennis Reyes is loose and ready and has been for a couple of innings down in that Cardinals bullpen. Long walk out to the mound, long slow walk back behind home plate. Well, he's just standing down there. He's ready to go. Koske spins around and strikes out. Two down. Well, we have to look ahead at some point, and it'll be Rasmus Pujols Ludwig for the Cardinals in the night. And I would imagine Kevin Gregg will uh, probably get loose, I would think. With Marmel starting the bottom of the ninth. In the air to center off the bat of Derek Lee. Rasmus will put it away. And Carlos Marmel will come on in a save situation because Alfonso Soriano hits another big home run. A two run shot, and the Cubs lead late. The hero of the moment, Alfonso Soriano. Reed Johnson's now playing center with Koske moving from center to right. Hoff powers out. And Carlos Marmol is on. Trying to save it for Aaron Heilman. This is Colby Rasmus. Ramirez moves in at third as the first pitch misses low. And uh, nobody did get up in the bullpen. This is Carlos Marmel's ninth inning. And a 
again, Bob. Uh, no matter what happens here, Lou will be asked again about the closer situation. But I, I don't think there's anything hidden here in terms of an agenda or what's going on. I, Cubs were down. Marmel got up. Cubs took the lead. He was ready, and he gets the chance. Three and zero oh on Rasmus. I think it's pretty simple given the physical condition of Kevin Gregg's right knee. As you very clearly explained in the last half inning, Lou said if he gets him up, he has to get him in. He can't get him up, sit him down, get him up, sit him down. Marmel was loose, locked, ready to go. So he's the guy, but now he's putting himself into some early trouble here in the ninth. Now big trouble with Pujols coming up, Ludwig after him. Well, History is on Carlos Marmol's side. Robert Pujols, three for 14 lifetime. That's a 214 batting average. And Ryan Ludwig in the on deck circle, one for five lifetime against Carlos Marmol. And Pujols gets hit by the first pitch. They put the first two on. That was one of Marmol's big problems down in Arizona when he came back from the WBC. He hit five batters in 11 innings pitched. That looked like a slider. He just tried to overthrow the living daylights out of it. It stayed up and in and caught Pujols on the back of the left arm near the elbow. And with that, Kevin Gregg will get up as Ludwig comes up. This game has seen a ton of twists and turns. Ludwig has hit two homers. He's driven in four. And Marvel still hasn't been able to find the strike zone. Here's his 1 0. Ludwig went after the fastball and couldn't get it. One and one. Just overpowers Ludwig with a belt high fastball right there. Carlos a little slider crazy coming into this ball game. Swing and a miss. I hope that those last two pitches will give him the confidence he needs to throw that fastball if the situation calls for it. Well, they say the 27th out's the toughest to get, but Carlos just needs to get that first one here in the ninth. He can relax a little bit. And he gets it. Ludwig strikes out. One out. No finesse involved there at all. Here's my three best fastballs. See what you can do with them. And Marmol's able to rush all three of them right past Ryan Level. Brendan Ryan will not take the at bat. It'll be Khalil Green. Slider strike on the outside corner. Double play here would end it. 8 7 Cubs. The 0 1 pitch called strike two. How many times have we seen this from Marmol? Lots of wildness, and then when he gets that first strike, he's locked in. Middle of the plate slider right there. 0 2 foul outside of first. was Chris Duncan's spot in the lineup, but he got taken out in the seventh. Ryan came into his spot, and now Green pinch hitting. 
And another 0-2. Ground ball. Terry gets one relay. Cubs win. Marmol gets the double play ball. Terry O to Fontenot to Lee. And they win it 8-7. That was a wild ball game, partner. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said it a few innings ago, Len. There was just no rhyme, riz- rhythm, or reason about this ball game. A lot of crazy things happened. Some real good pitching at times. Some real poor pitching at times. Big offense at times. No offense at other times. But all's well that ends well. The Cubs end up with one more than the other guys.